Welcome, and this is the ultimate PC controller test today. The Scuf Envision Pro versus the Xbox Elite 2 versus the PlayStation DualSense Edge. Here we go. Firstly, the price. The Xbox Elite 2 cost around about $159 or £159 in the UK. This gives you the component pack, but if you buy the scuff paddles and the core controller, that can save you up to £35 or $35. Next up, the DualSense Edge. That will cost you around about £209 in the UK and roughly about the same in the US. And lastly, the scuff Envision. That will cost you roughly about $179.99 in the US and the UK. So in the box then, you get the controller itself here, look. And then with the controller, you get multiple joysticks. You get removable back paddles, like this. And you get the hard shell case. Which is actually really smart, by the way. And the controller fits in and slots in just like that, lovely. In the actual case then, you get the USB cable. So there's your USB. In the case then, you also get four different size joysticks. You also get a USB locking device, uh, which just stops it from getting pulled out at the end. So you can actually lock it into place on the back of the controller like so. Um, quite a handy little idea there. But to be fair, it's probably not something I would use. Uh, the USB goes clips into the back here, and then that can just hold it and stop it from getting dragged out when you've got it on charge or something like that. You also get on the back different types of rear paddles as well. So two different types. You get these sort of butterfly effect ones, and you also get these flat looking ones. And whichever ones suit you best, you know, you can use, which is really handy. So I actually prefer these ones um, over these, but whichever you prefer, I think that's a really nice touch. So another thing worth mentioning here is you actually get a slot here for spare joysticks. So um, if the actual joystick goes faulty, then you can actually buy a whole new one, um, which actually is really good. You've got a release button under the bottom here, which takes this front panel off. So you can just, if you've got a small enough nail that is, you can just click it off like that, take the little front panel off like this, and then what you can do is just lift one of these levers on the side and then that comes out like so and actually like as you can see that fits inside the case there you can actually buy a spare one of these and if it gets stick drift you can just leave it in there as a spare one um, it's a really really clever idea so looking at the controller then and pretty much like all the other controllers that we're looking at today so you can actually lock off the, tr the triggers here like this um, the only issue with it is which can be quite annoying is you've actually still got a bit of play in the trigger there look so yeah you can see there actually there's still quite a lot of play in that trigger which the other controllers aren't so bad at especially the scuff actually the scuff is actually a lot better um, so there's a bit more of a delay there when you go to click it but the surface area of the trigger is good and that's really positive um, and I'll come on to the reason why I've said that later um, but yeah that's a positive there um, also it's worth noting too that on the back paddles is you've only got two so you've got two on the front here and then you've also got two here these are actually integrated with the joysticks that we said that we could take out and replace at any time in the future I found these buttons although they're remappable they're pretty useless. I mean, I, I suppose if I'm playing Call of Duty or something, I could actually, you know, if I'm marking a position, I suppose I could bring it down here. I'd probably be a bit quicker than going all the way up. I don't think it's that much different to actually moving your thumb to the D-pad. So these aren't that helpful for me personally, but they might be for you. As usual, we've got the mouse pad here, which you can actually touch and obviously press as well. It's good to mention that because the other controllers don't have that, so that's really positive. Um, how it feels in the hand then is, to be honest with you, the feeling in the hand is quite, when you feel the other controllers, is quite bulky. This is a bulky controller. It's not as good as feel in the hand. It's got this material which 
it doesn't feel plush compared to the other controllers that we've got here today so it's actually quite heavy so it's definitely worth considering that too i mean it doesn't give you arm ache or anything it's just in comparison to the other controllers you you notice the difference so battery life then this will last about five six hours i've tested that and confirmed it and that was playing call of duty uh the leds and stuff like that they're on full blast so yeah about five six hours for that one i reckon also worth mentioning as well connectivity so the playstation controller has bluetooth connectivity and cable connectivity so you can connect it to your playstation and your pc via cable or via the bluetooth as well which is really handy okay so software then there isn't actually any native software for the playstation 5 dual sense so you have to use third party software so i use this which is dsx so it actually manages your mapping buttons so you can download this on steam it's called dsx i think it's uh i did get mine on deal it was like three quid but it's just gone back up to four pound 29 so you can wait for it to go on a deal or something like that yeah and let's so let's have a little look at that now okay so this is the uh this is the dual sense x dsx yeah and you can actually assign the controls here look and this is pretty much as far as i've gone with it i don't really need anything else with it so it does bump the price of the controller up a bit there when you include this but to be fair I, I feel like you need it if you want to make use of those back buttons so yeah you can adjust it via this this app here you can adjust your color settings and other little things mic leds everything really um so it's definitely worth investigating but there is no native software for pc for the playstation 5 dualsense so this is the xbox elite 2 so to be honest with you this is it i've just bought the scuff paddles if i went for the component pack it would cost me a lot more money and i thought well this controller could be the budget option uh so we can give it a go in a bit anyway and you can see about that but um this is as it comes in the core package and you don't actually get anything with it so you literally as you see there that's as you get it and you get a usb cable but yeah you get four paddles here you can actually insert and then with this little package here from scuff you actually get the four paddles and they're metal so there you go as you can see they just slot in absolutely beautifully there look and there we go as you can see they fit in absolutely perfectly and they feel really really good so also in the box you get a key which i failed to mention but the way that works is you can pop these off and you can actually exchange these as well and take them out if you get the component pack you do get a few more in there and the key actually slots in here so the key actually slots in there and then what that does is then actually tensions the joystick so you can actually adjust the tension i think there's three different settings in there and you can adjust the tension of it to your liking which is actually quite handy to be fair so i think this controller feels better than the dual sense because it just feels a little bit more um plush a bit more sturdy it has a sort of rubbery material on the side which gives you better grip it feels more it feels more controlled in the hand the only thing i don't kind of like about it on the shape side of it and the feel it's got this real angled control to it like here and that almost feels like my hands are too far in so when i go to press my triggers if you can see my actual fingers are well overlapping here so you don't get the full tap of it if you remember as well going back to the dual sense i said about the surface area now this kind of wraps around around your finger here it's got a wrap around it but for me it doesn't really work it almost feels like you've only got this section here to put your finger on so you don't get a good enough grip on that which really frustrates me it's it's not i don't think it's ideal for fps games that type of trigger for me anyway for me personally you've also got the lock off mechanism here on the back um which is better than the dual sense because you get less play in it although there is still a bit of play The weight as well comes in at 345 so it is slightly heavier than the dual sense but it doesn't feel as heavy also another thing as well is although it feels really tough a real nice solid controller these buttons feel really cheap and tacky 
um, the D-pad does as well. It almost feels like it could fall off in your hands. And you've also got the button in the middle there and you can select the three different modes, which is really handy to have too. I like the fact that you can actually set it in the software and have these modes, but we'll go on to that in a second. Um, and of course, you've got your connectivity button there. You've got your USB on the top there. Yeah, and generally overall, it's actually not a bad feeling controller. If I was to compare it to the DualSense, I would say this is slightly better. So another thing worth mentioning for this is connectivity and you can get a USB dongle for this and that will connect up to your PC and you can connect up to eight controllers at once. You can also connect it via USB-C and you can also connect it via Bluetooth as well. Don't know what magic they put in this controller but the battery life is astonishing. I mean I don't think it would last the full 40 hours but it's probably going to be close. So here then you've got the Xbox Accessories app and you can get that from the Microsoft Store for free. It doesn't cost you anything at all and on the front straight away you have to connect it by the way which is really annoying. You have to connect this to your PC to get it to work which I wish you could just do it over Bluetooth which you can do with the other two controllers. So yeah you can configure your three different profiles there look and you can configure it in here and you can take it in and then you can edit that too. So I've made a COD one up here but You've got different map buttons here. You can go for left stick, right stick, triggers, and the vibration, and also you can set the colors as well. And if you go to your triggers there or your left sticks, you can do pretty much the same on each other. And that is sensitive curve there. Look, you can set that to delayed, aggressive, or instant. And then when you go in there, you can actually adjust it how you want there. So it does give you that fine adjustment for you, which is really good and really helpful. Same goes for the triggers. You can actually adjust the sliders there to get your dead zones. Mine was always set like this and it was fine. Vibrations as well, you can go in and out of those. And then you've got your Xbox color light there. And that's pretty much for the mapping. That's all you really need. Overall, I find this app probably the easiest to use. So yeah, this is the Scuff Envision Pro. Yeah, so what you get in the box then, obviously the controller itself, same as before really. You get the uh, lockable triggers here, which is back here. The buttons aren't interchangeable or anything like that, so they just sort of built into the controller. Um, and then also you've got the removable faceplate, uh, which it comes off like this. And then you can also, once you've taken it off like this, then you can actually replace the joysticks there. Look. And you get four different sizes all together and you get convex and concave ones in there too so that's pretty cool also just worth noting there's a reset button here um, which you can use as well yeah so basically there you go look and that sort of magnetizes itself back on somehow it's quite really quite cool if you didn't know already on the controller look you've got your side buttons here which is an add-on you don't have no gyro or mouse pad on this one just to let you know you got your macro keys on the front there blanking plates for these side buttons and you get blanking plates for these buttons here on the back as well you only get the blanking plates for the back buttons there for two of them so um, yeah they're the blanking plates you get this little tool so you can actually take off the case a little bit easier but to be honest you don't need that and this is pretty much it that comes in the bag obviously you get a uh, charging USB charging cable with that as well so let's go on to the actual feel of the scuff then and this is one that everyone's been waiting for right this is the first time we've ever received a pc controller that i've been excited about and yeah at first it might not feel like it's got good quality but honestly it's just lighter weight the buttons are all mouse clicks so the actual responsiveness of this controller is amazing as well and we're going to go on to the responsiveness soon but yeah and just the general feel of it you know we got this material on the back which i don't know if you guys can see from there and that material on the back that you can see is is really really grippy and it feels really really good on the hand the main thing about this controller that pushes it in front of everything else is the shape everything on this controller is accessible every button every macro it is no overreaching for anything and everything slots in perfectly um, the side buttons can be easily pressed which can be a concern but you've got the blanking plates if you if you've got a problem with that the buttons click really easily and they feel satisfying the joysticks you get with it are perfect and they feel really good um, and then going on to the actual buttons itself this is where I really like it and it was a friend of mine actually who said this looks like Nicki Minaj's fingernail, if you see what I mean on there. Well, it genuinely does. But the good thing about it is you've got so much grip on it. 
and it's so responsive because you've got so much surface area to click on onto so once you disengage the mechanism so it actually goes to a full analog trigger and then when you click it back it's a physical mouse click again with almost zero play in it almost zero which is incredible so shape the weight of this thing weighs in at 290 grams so it feels considerably lighter than the other controllers um, which is also a pro about it you've got on the back as well here you've got your your rear paddles now they're not as accessible as maybe the PlayStation ones which I feel are a bit better but these are tucked out the way they're real right in the corner and your fingers don't really have to move very far to press them which is really good so you can press them either side also you've got the connectivity button in the middle here because you can connect it to USB on the back there or you can connect it through the Wi-Fi dongle so there's two connectivity methods there USB-C which is in the top there or you go for the Wi-Fi dongle you cannot connect this via Bluetooth to anything this is a real downer for this controller so overall then this is probably the most comfortable controller in the hand and the feel of it is the best as well overall also worth mentioning the battery life is pretty much the same as the playstation in my eyes i would say about five six hours from what i've tested okay this is the iq app then and as you can see you've got the scuff and vision there and there's the dongle to go with it i mean i leave the dongle alone you can update it in there but to be fair it, i think it just does it all through the uh, controller anyway so there's not really much to worry about on that um i think you can force pair it on there too uh, but as you can see here this is the rainbow effect here i've got here on the colors there the lighting effects and then we've got the hardware mappings as well and then the mappings itself so um you can remap anything you want on this and then you can set these to like media or open a game for you which is really really handy as i've done in my review before of the scuff and vision we went through this in a bit more detail but you can see that it's really easy and intuitive to use i th i do think it's a little bit more complicated to start with because when you click on it to just remap it for instance if i click on it to remap I have to go down here and do it and reopen all this up click the button and then click this to remap it and it does get a little bit it's not as intuitive but you get used to it as you can see i've already mentioned it you got the lighting effects uh the triggers itself i've had to set them to like five or six percent if you drop it all the way down to zero um it basically will shudder and move around and it'll fire so there is a bit of drift on that but i think that's something to do with the engagement between analog and the mouse click and then obviously you go on to the next one this one's i found this is the best setting for me on call of duty and it's the dynamic setting like this the curve like this with zero dead zone and that's how i have mine set but you can do custom ones here that like you can create your own look custom preset or however you want it but for me i just find this the best way and i've used it on multiple games too you can adjust the vibration there too and you've also got the device settings here to save it to the onboard memory it, you would have to have it plugged in via USB-C and then you can save yourself a slot there and it will save your current settings that you're on now you've also got a brightness bar here which I keep quite low anyway because it's not really needed and you've got an auto shut off there and an eco mode which turns off the rumble packs um, and apart from that that's pretty much it but it's a really good good app overall you have to have it open which is really annoying so it's something that does have to run in the background okay so now we're going to go on to response time of the controllers uh, i wanted to show you how i did it first and i did it a bit differently to everyone else so this is the human benchmark test right and i'll put it link it below and it works on how quickly you react to when it changes color so as you can see here if i click on it now you'll say wait go green and click and then that tells you how quickly it took you to respond. So it gives you latency time of the whole system, which I think is really good. So what I did was, is I downloaded a application called joy to key and it's free. And I set three different profiles like this. So you set your left click button to the right trigger of your controller. And as you can see here, mouse click there, look, and that emulates the mouse. I hover my mouse over this part of the area here and I use my right trigger to do the reaction test. Like so. 
and then it gives you the overall system latency and how quick I respond to it changing. And the good thing about this is, is it then shows me the differences in the controllers. So I did five rounds of this for each controller and this is the results I came up with. So using Bluetooth then, in third place was the Elite 2 at 279 milliseconds. And in second place was the Edge at 204 milliseconds and the Envision at 183 milliseconds. So cabled response times then. So in third place was the Elite 2 at 206 milliseconds. In second place was the Edge at 189 milliseconds. And in first place was the Envision at 179 milliseconds. Okay guys, so here we are at the end of the review then and a conclusion. And before we close up, I just wanted to talk about one more thing and that's warranty. So all of the controllers here get one year warranty, which I think is perfect. They've all had to sort of increase their warranty periods. I mean, Xbox was only three months at one point, but now that's a year. So Scuff was the same too, and they've increased it to one year too. Summing up then, so we got the free controllers. So firstly, I just wanted to summarize with the Xbox. This is actually on paper the best one. You've got the best battery life. You've got great shape, great durability, multiple different ways of connecting. So you can connect this via Bluetooth, PC dongle, and wired so it has the best options overall so where this one lets itself down though is in the response times which is the slowest of them all it does a lot better though when you connect it wired so if you're on a budget and you play fps games every now and then this is the one to go for really i, I think this is probably about the best controller value wise if you own a playstation and the pc and you do multiple then i would be going for the playstation 5 edge so this is pretty much as fast as the scuff in response times but you also get the dual connectivity with bluetooth as well so i think you can get a dongle as well actually for the switch plug a dongle into the switch and play this through the switch as well so um it has multiple different ways of connecting not only that you've got great response times the only thing that lets it down is it feels bulky and heavy in the hand if you've got small hands then yeah the um the xbox is the one to go for or if you want a bit more of a budget then we go on to the scuff and this one here is probably overall my most favorite not just because it's new but because it's light it's agile very fast response times cabled and wireless dongle either way you're getting fast response times some people have mentioned about the dead zone issues on it and also some people's remapping has reset but I haven't had this issue and maybe it's just a firmware update that's going to come soon but everything fits perfectly in the hand it's so well designed and I would recommend this one as my number one spot and I would say if you haven't got a PlayStation or Xbox and you don't need the Bluetooth capability then this is the one to go for so thank you for watching today guys it's been really really difficult video to make but it's been fun and i hope you've enjoyed it so if you want more controller videos like this or you want any more tech videos for gaming let us know in the comments below and also subscribe and like and i'll do that for you